Hey, welcome to our first three-dimensional moment example. So over here, I have this diagram drawn. And we have this metal pipe right here, this rigid metal pipe right here. It's attached at point A, and at point B, there is some sort of rope that goes all the way up to point C, and there is tension in this rope. So this tension is obviously acting this way, and that force right there on point B is going to cause a moment or induce a moment about point A, right? Because this is a rigid body right here. So the tension in that rope is 700 newtons. And the question is asking, what is the moment about point A? So I've already drawn in all of the axes. We have the positive x-axis this way, the y-axis this way, and the z-axis this way. So with any problem like this, there's always a few things that we must do. First, we need to orient ourselves and understand which way is positive. So make sure you have your axes done correctly and you understand the orientation of the problem. The second thing to do is when we're calculating moment, remember the definition of a moment is the position vector r crossed with whatever force is inducing that moment. Now in this case, our r vector is going to be from point A all the way to point B. Why? Because that is where this tension force from this rope is acting. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to try to calculate R. So our R is our position vector, and it's going to have three components. And remember, it goes from point A to point B. So the x component of this position vector is just going to be this distance right here, which I've labeled to be 5.7 meters. So this is a positive 5.7 meters in the i direction. Now, what's interesting about the position vector r is this pipe right here is along the x-axis and along the x-axis only. In other words, it actually doesn't have an orientation in the z direction or the y direction. Well, it does, but those values are just zero. So this is just going to be plus zero meters in the j direction, plus zero meters in the k direction. Okay, simple enough. These just obviously go to zero, so we don't have to worry about them. Now, our force vector is going to be a little tricky. So our force vector is acting in three dimensions, right? So far, we've been doing two-dimensional forces and two-dimensional moments, but this time we're in three dimensions. Now, we know that the magnitude of that force is 700 newtons, right? That's just given in the problem. However, we need to know a little bit more than that, right? We need to understand what the components of this force are so that we could do this operation right here, r cross f. We can't just take a vector, right, and cross it with a magnitude or a value. That doesn't really make sense. So we have to go all the way back to when we were studying forces in three dimensions, break f up into fx, fy, and fz, and then use those values to determine what the entire expression for f is. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, do you remember lambda? Lambda was our unit vector for a force in, or a vector in three dimensions. So remember, the i unit vector is along the x, j is along the y, and k is along the k. Lambda is along whatever force vector is oriented in three-dimensional space. And if you remember, we could represent our forces as the force value times the unit vector lambda. Now, lambda really comes from two points along that force's line of action. So our tension force right here is acting in this direction. So it's going from B to C. Now, we can choose any two points along that line of action. So we could choose you know, this point and this point, or C and B, or even something along uh, this, the rope here and something else along the line of action. Obviously, it's best to just use whatever we're given. So our unit vector lambda, remember, lambda is the vector from those two points. So in this case, if we're doing B and C, it's going to be this vector right here, which is just vector BC over the magnitude 
of that BC vector. So that's just BC. So now it's our job to figure out what BC is, uh, the vector, as well as the magnitude. Now, if you recall, we could say that BC, so BC right here, is really DXI plus DYJ plus DZK. Now, these D values are simply distances between points B and C along the X, Y, and Z axes. So for an example, if we looked at DX, well, DX is going to be the ending point minus the starting point. So our ending point is, I'm sorry, our ending point is C, right? Because our vector is going this way because that's the direction of tension. So our ending point is C. So it's gonna be the X value of C minus the X value of B. So in other words, the X value of C is just zero, right? Because C just acts within the YZ plane. So it's going to be zero minus positive 5.7. So zero minus 5.7 gives us a value of DX is equal to negative 5.7. Okay, awesome. Well, what about DY? DY is going to be the Y value of the ending point minus the Y value of the starting point. So our y value right here is 2.1 meters. It's positive 2.1 meters minus, well, what's the y value of b? b is just zero because b only acts along the x-axis. It lays on the x-axis. So this right here is going to be 2.1 minus zero, and that gives us a value of 2.1 meters. Okay, well, what about dz? So dz, okay, the ending point is c, the value, the z value of point C is this value right here. But because we said z is acting positive this way, this value right here, this distance right here, has a coordinate of negative 4 meters. So we're doing negative 4 meters minus the z value of b, which is also 0. So this is just going to be negative 4 meters. Okay, awesome. So that really gives us BC, the vector BC. Now the magnitude of BC, what we can do is we can take the root sum square of all three of these components and that should give us D. So in other words, D is DX squared plus DY squared plus DZ squared. And then you just take the square root. And all I'm doing is just plugging in these values right here into this equation. I'm not going to bore you with that algebra. You can try it for yourself. But D turns out to be about 7.2732 meters. Okay, awesome. So this is the value for BC. And this, along with these three values, are the values of this BC vector. Okay, and that gives us lambda. Now, F, we already know. It's 700 newtons. So we have 700 newtons times this unit vector right here. So if I were to write all that out so it's a little bit clearer, our F vector right here is going to be, well, F is just 700 newtons, and then times our unit vector lambda, which is BC over BC, and it turns out to just be this right here. So all I did was I took these three values, this value, this value, and this value, plugged it into here, and that gave me this numerator, and then our BC value is what we calculated for D, and that gave us the denominator right here. Okay, and if we break this up into the i, j, and k components, we get a value of negative 548.6 newtons in the i direction, and then we have plus 202.1 newtons in the j direction, and then finally minus 385 newtons in the k direction. Okay, awesome. So this is our force vector. This is our tension that is acting within this rope. And remember, this is three-dimensional, so we're going to have three different components for this F vector. Okay, so awesome. We have our F value here, and we also have our R value right here. So we can plug all of this in into our moment equation and figure out what our moment is. And that turns out to be all of this expression right here. So we have our position vector, which only has one real component, right, just along the x-axis. And then we have our force vector here, which we calculated over here. So now what we can do is we can start taking the cross products. So the first one I want to do is 5.7 
times the x component here. Now remember, we're doing i cross i. Now that's just going to give us a value of zero, right? i cross i or any unit vector cross itself is just zero. Okay, how about the next one? So 5.7 meters times this 202.1 newtons. Well, that gives us a value of positive 1152 newton meters. And because we're doing i cross j, that gives us positive k. This is going to be k right here. Now, finally, the last term, so plus this 5.7 times negative 385. Well, we have a positive number here times a negative number here, so that's going to be negative. But because we're doing i cross k, we're going to get j, but because it's i cross k and not k cross i, we're going to get a negative j. So even though 5.7 and negative 385 is negative, we have negatives that cancel out because i cross k is also negative j. So plus 2194 newton meters in the j direction. So in this example, we actually ended up with a moment that had two different components, one about the k-axis and then one about the j-axis. So due to this tension right here for this rigid body AB, our moment at point A is this value right here.